Hello and welcome to Mathematics Made Easier channel. This is your favorite mathematics teacher, Comfort and Welcome Atta. I welcome you all to my class this minute. If there's the very first time of you joining my class, a special welcome goes to you. If you are yet subscribed to my channel, please look down there and click on the subscribe button to subscribe. Then also click on the notification bell to be updated whenever I upload any new tutorial. All right, thank you so much for joining me. So today we are going to take a look at certain things that are very important um, on statistics, all right? So I'm going to tell you what statistics is. I'm going to explain some statistical questions to you. I'm going to take you through the measures of sender. I'm going to take you through the measures of variation. And I'm going to take you through so many things all together. And I'll try to be very smart and brief as possible, right? So now pick your job first as you come along with me for today's class. So I'm sharing this from the Big Idea book. From the Big Idea book. Right, so this is all about uh, the statistics, okay? Under that, we have, oh, uh, no. Let's go back. So under statistics, we have the introduction to statistics, and that is um, we have the introduction to the statistics. That is what statistics is. is a is a process of well, you collecting data, analyzing data, collecting, analyzing, and interpreting your data, right? So that is you using some media to collect the data. After collecting the data, you now organize it, analyze it, and interpret your data, right? So then basically we have statistical questions. We have some questions that involves several answers to the questions. And the these questions are statistical questions, right? Some questions that demand only one answer are not statistical questions. And I gave some few examples in my previous lesson. So now let's quickly look at, I've already talked about the measures of center, that is the mean, the median and the mode. We've already gone through that. Uh, am I sharing? Let's make sure I am sharing this. So let's see. Right. So I've also taken you through the mean, median, and mode. And of course, the range. We've, we've seen all these ones. I've also taken you through the quartiles. The lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the inter quartile. And um, today I'm going to take you through the mean absolute deviation. And I've also made a video on tutorial on this, but I'm going to highlight some keywords for you to take note of it, okay? That is the mean absolute deviation. The mean absolute deviation, right. For you said mean absolute deviation, what is it? It is the average. Let's zoom it out so that you guys can see it for well. right. So high. Okay. So mean absolute deviation is an average of how much data values differ from the mean. When you say deviation, what does it mean? To deviate, to move from the normal, to change lane. That is basically deviating from the mean. So it's how uh, the average of how much data values differ from the mean. That is a mean absolute deviation. There are four keywords that you look out for when you're calculating for the mean absolute deviation. What are these steps? One, you find the mean. Two, find a distance, right, between the data value and the mean. Three, you find the sum of all the distance that you find. Then the last one is you divide it by, you divide your answer in step three by the data values, the number of data values you have. Now I'm going to take some example and work it out for you to see. So let's see this example. 
uh, have the data to be, let's say, one, three, four, and six. This is my data, right? This is my data. How do I find the mean absolute deviation? We are going to go through the various steps. We are, oh, right. I can't freeze the one. Okay, let me pick the first from the right. Good, 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 good. So I have great. So I have the data, which is one, two, four, and five. This is my data. Okay. Now, how do I represent or how do I find the mean absolute deviation? Four steps involve one, find the mean. And you know how to find the mean already, right? So you know mean, literally the average. You add you add everything up, you find the sum of all these ones divided by how many numbers you have in here. So we have one, two, three, four. We have four numbers. So if you add these ones up, what is this giving you? Three, seven, then twelve. Twelve divided by four will give you three. So literally this is oh sorry, let me pick the eraser great. I said this is my board. <laughs> this was my board. Right. So we now pick this one as uh, three plus three. Right. So this is the mean. That is for, uh, step one. Find the mean. Step two. Uh, step three to do what? Find the difference between the, the data value and the mean. Okay. So I'm coming. Let me give a pause. Uh, oh. Right. Okay. All right. So now we are finding the the distance. Distance. There's absolute value. Distance. You measure the distance from the zero to the number. And so we have. Let's draw a simple table. Okay, let's bring that one here. So now I have my data. I have my distance, sorry. Data and the distance. Okay, so the data I have one, two, four, and five. So I'm subtracting the data from the mean. So one minus three, right? Then I have two. Minus three, absolute value of those numbers. Four minus three, absolute value of that. Absolute value of three minus and five minus three. So one minus three is negative two. But the absolute value of negative two, two is what is positive two. So for absolute values, you don't have negatives. Right. So we have two. Two minus three is negative one. But the absolute value of negative one is one, positive one. So this is giving me one. Four minus three is one. Absolute value of one is still one. Five minus three is two. Absolute value of two, positive two, is still positive two. Is that this sounds from zero to the number? So now this is step two. So this was the step one. This is the step two. Find the distance. Step two. Right now, what is step three? Step three. Step three is we find the summation of these ones. So two plus one is three, plus one is four, plus two is six. So you add everything up, which is two plus one plus one plus two. That is giving us six, right? So this is step three. Find the summation of your of distance. Then the last step, step four. Step four is you divide the answer in step three by the number of data values you have. So you're going to divide six by how many numbers do we have for the initial, for my what is that number of data values given? That is four. So six divided by four. That gives us what? So you guys can do a lot of this method of, yes, let's just form which. So six divided by four gives 1.5. 1.5. Or one and five tenths, right? One and five. So this is the final answer. So this becomes your mean absolute deviation. Four steps.
Step one, find a mean. That is step one, find a mean. Step two, find the distance between your data value and the mean. That is step two. Step three, add them up. Step four, divide it by your data value. That is all. It is not difficult, but it contains steps. Mass is principle. This is the principle behind how to find the absolute mean deviation. All right, so after this, now we've seen what statistics is. We've seen the statistical questions, questions that involves so many answers or varieties of answers. Example, what is the hair color of students in your class? You can count so many colors when it comes to my class. I have brown, I have brown, I have black, I have pink, I have so many hair colors. So we don't have only one answer as two, no. So this becomes what a statistical question. But again, if I ask, okay, how many tables do you have in your class? You can probably count the number of tables you have and everyone can give me a fixed answer. As well, let's say, Miss A, we have 15 tables in your class. So this, this is not a statistical question because it didn't give you varieties of answers. But questions that involve varieties of answers becomes a statistical question. Right, good. So this came in one of the SC ready tests and so it's part of the priority standard that we are supposed to teach you. Then it was the priority standard. You're supposed to know what a mean is, what mode is, what median is, what um, the quartiles, quartiles, right? I supposed to know all these ones as a priority standard. Then under this, you know the measures of variation. That is what I have just mentioned. Then another measure of variation is the mean absolute deviation. You are supposed to know this. It is part of this priority standard. Then you come to the histogram and others. So I'll take my time and also take you through the histogram and others. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I believe this tutorial was helpful. If it was, do not forget to give me a thumbs up down there. Do not forget to share this link to your friends and colleagues. Practice the same makes perfect. Good practice makes perfect. All right, so I will leave you here and come back later on. Right. Okay, so thank you so much for your time and attention. And please do not forget to also keep by my book, my Mathematics Made Easier series book to help you build your math skills. If you have any problem at all, do not hesitate to um, email me through my comfort at gmail.com, my full name at gmail.com, and I'll respond as soon as I can. Till we meet again, please stay safe and learn hard. Anyways, thank you for the 100,000 views on YouTube. That is, I, I feel so much uh, loved and I, I appreciate your support as well. Till we meet again. Please stay safe and learn hard.